Hey, this is Step Ament. Welcome to my Exorcism.io series. In this video, I'll be working through the resistor color exercise from the Exorcism.io Ruby track. Uh, so in this exercise, uh, we are dealing with uh, resistors, the tiny little electronics components that have uh, color bands on them representing numeric values. And those colors come in nine different um, nine different values representing the numbers zero through nine. So here we have black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, and white. And um, we are going to uh, be given, I think, a string name for a color, and we need to return the corresponding integer value. Uh, okay, so let me go ahead and Go ahead and pull this down. Copy in my rake file. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the, the empty Ruby file and open up the test. Uh, okay, so not a lot of tests here. Um, I see that we have a resistor color class defined in, a, in that resistor underscore color dot RB file that has a class level method color code. Um, and okay, well, I think they're basically giving us an implementation here. Uh, they want us to create a, a, um, a constant called colors containing an array of all of the color names. So I think this will be pretty straightforward. Let me go ahead and open up my test running pane um, and then execute the test, which will fail because um, I deleted the file. There is no resistor underscore color file. File does not exist. So let me go ahead and create that. And I'll swap them and run it again. And the next failure will be uh, I need to initialize the class resistor color. All right. And now, now it'll complain about the missing class method color code. Okay, so let me go ahead and define that. Um, okay, it's gonna want me to um, accept an argument here. Wrong number of arguments given. So let's call this color and I'm returning nil, but I need to return zero. So let me just go ahead and hard code that to begin with. And that will pass. Okay, so I'm gonna let the next test uh, tell me that that was wrong. Whoops. This is of course going to fail because I'm returning a zero instead of a nine. And I would, if you've been watching these, usually I'll go ahead and I'll do the implementation here. Uh, but I was pairing over the weekend with um, with my friend Tan. And if we if we end up finishing that exercise, I'll probably edit it and, and end up posting it here on the channel. And I'm thinking about maybe starting a series of um, of live pairing with um, with just different different friends or uh, students in my tactical refactoring course. And Tan is both. We've worked together before, uh, but he's also uh, he's in fact, he was a beta student in that course. Um, and um, he was saying he often he'll wait actually usually for the third test. So he'll do a very naive implementation here. And so I'll show you what we did in a similar case uh, yesterday, actually. Um, so I'm going to treat zero because it was my first one as the default case. And I'm going to insert a guard clause here to return nine if uh, the color is white. And so that that that's enough to make that pass. And then I'll come down here and in this third case uh, will fail, of course, because it's not going to be nine or zero. It's going to be three. And that's the indication that, wait a minute, there's something else going on here. It's not this case of like a default with this one exception case. 
there's actually something more complex going on. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and implement the, the real solution here. And so I know this test down here tells me that um, I need to build up this constant. So even though even though that there's not um, that test isn't running yet, I'm going to go ahead and pretend that I've got that. And so what I want to do is if I have an array of colors, then I should be able to ask for the index of color and get back, get back what I want. So because let's see, what have I got? I've got zero, three and nine. OK, if this is going to be a, an array, I pretty much need the whole thing. So let me go ahead um, and just set this up and this will be an array of words, array, array of text. Um, it's going to be black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, and white. All right. So all three of those cases work, and then this should work as well. Uh, okay, cool. Um, one other thing I might do here is uh, I don't want to make assumptions about the input that anybody's going to give me here. Uh, so usually what I like to do if I need it to be a string, um, which, you know, I, this array is all, or this, all it's, it's just an array of strings in this case. So I, I might force it to a string using this method on kernel, the uppercase string. Kernel has a few of these. And uh, what it does is it takes whatever you give it and it it tries all sorts of things. It, it makes sure that you have a string and it does whatever it can to convert the input you've given it into a string so that you know you've got a string. You don't have to you never have to check the type if you if if you your code needs a string, you just do this. You've got a string uh, so you can just go you in uh, Avdi Graham's words, you can uh, Proceed. You can code confidently. Confident Ruby. Um, check out his book, Confident Ruby, if you haven't. It's uh, it's it's really good. Uh, okay. So let's see. The other thing I might do is let me change one of these tests here because somebody might give us colors like this, and that will fail, right? So I know I've got a string here. I'm going to downcase it. And then the other thing that I'm that I usually will do with this is I'll say, OK, well, color code. It's doing, you know, what, what's the job of color code? Well, the job of color code is to take the input and return the color from the colors index like it's doing this. Right. But it's actually doing two things because it's doing all this work on the input we've been given. It's normalizing our input. So. Um, I'll usually create a normalize method. Um, you, you, th this, this you'll usually see me do, um, call it from an initialize method where I'm creating an instance of a class and I want to normalize the input. But I think it's going to be it's going to be fine here. Um, let me just create a private class method normalize. I think I can just define that like that. I'm going to call it input and just paste in what I took out of the other five other uh, method. Cool. All right. Yeah, I, I don't know what else I would do. I don't see anything else here uh, to refactor. Everything's working great. And I think I'm going to go ahead and submit that short and sweet today. All right, cool. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking through to the end. Uh, if you got anything out of this, please like the video and subscribe if you want to be notified when uh, when I've got more content coming out. Uh, and I'm pretty soon, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna start posting different kinds of content. Uh, the live pairing is uh, is one thing I might try, um, and I might start doing some Q and A, some live action Q and A uh, type videos. Uh, starting coming up with um, 
your biggest questions, um, starting with what is refactoring to talk about that. Also, if you want to level up your refactoring skills, uh, write code today that you won't hate in six months and add massive value to your team and your company, become a superhero to your team so that things get easier and easier instead of harder and harder to work with as you go, then you need to check out my tactical refactoring course. Uh, here, here's the address, uh, tacticalrefactoring.com, or there's a link in the description below. Uh, all right, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.